Hi students, today we start lecture 29 and today I'm going to discuss the aircraft drag polar. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now we have looked at the drag polar before and it was for a wing and now we are going to extend this concept to the complete aircraft. So essentially the drag polar of the aircraft is given by this equation CD is CDE plus CL square by pi e a r. Now C D is the drag coefficient of the complete airplane here. C D E is the parasite drag coefficient for the airplane and C L is the lift coefficient of the airplane. So we are going to discuss these things in more detail. Of course you know that E is the span wise efficiency factor which is 1 in the case of the elliptical lift distribution. And of course, the aspect ratio of the wing also comes in here. Now, there is some difference between this drag polar of the airplane and the drag polar we have considered before for the wing because now there are many more parts of the airplane which also play a role in this drag polar. So, for example, CDE here, which is the parasite drag coefficient of the airplane, includes the profile drag of the wings, which was the previous case, but it also includes friction and pressure drag of the fuselage, of the horizontal tail, the vertical tail, the nacelles from which the engines typically hang, the landing gear, and any other surfaces which may be there on an airplane, which involves some kind of airflow. Not only these, it also includes any component of wave drag, for example, if you are flying at transonic speeds and at high speeds, then you are going to encounter wave drag and that is also going to make its way into this CDE, which I have given in red here. So now let's look at the second part, which is the CL based term. So here, let's just look at CL here. So now the lift coefficient of the airplane would include, of course, the lift coefficients of the wing, which we considered in the finite wing case, but also now you have lift contribution coming from the fuselage, from the horizontal tail, from the vertical tail, and any other surfaces on the aircraft, which involve airflow and which are going to contribute to lift. So all these components need to be factored in. So now there is some difference between this CDE and the typical drag which we considered before. For example, CDE is going to be impacted by flow separation, which is likely to take place on the wing, on the tail, on the fuselage, nacelle, landing gear, also any effects of shock induced flow separation and so on. So what is going to happen is that CDE is going to depend on the angle of attack alpha. So essentially think of an airplane which is flying, its angle is going to be different in different parts of flight and depending on that the CDE value is going to be different. So what happens here is that CDE becomes a function of alpha and we of course know that CL is a function of alpha, therefore alpha is a function of CL. So this is basically from the CL alpha curve for example, if you can put a curve of CL with respect to alpha, you can also put a curve of alpha with respect to CL by flipping the axis. So essentially there is a formula which links CDE to CL and the formula is given here. So the CDE is some constant part here CD0 plus a lift dependent part which is given by RCL square where R is an empirical constant which is going to be determined by some kind of theory or experiment. So this is something now we are going to consider in our future drag polar. So what we do is we take the drag polar which I introduced in the first couple of slides and then we substitute the value of CD here which is given by CD0 plus RCL square. So all I do is I take this and put it into this equation here and so I get this expanded equation. So what has happened here is that the R term has come here, the 1 by pi E A R term has come here and the C L square term has been taken out here. So essentially now you can clearly see there is a component which is not dependent on C L 
or on alpha and there is a component which is dependent on cl here and so what's happened is that this coefficient of this cl square term has gotten modified because of this rcl square here so now we are going to play around a bit with the efficiency factors and look at some differences between the previous drag polar which we defined for a finite wing and the current drag polar which is for the aircraft. So if we look at the aircraft drag polar, it looks like this here. Now I don't want to carry this big cumbersome thing inside the brackets all the time. So what I could do is I could define this as pi E1 AR. So I could essentially write this equation in blue as this equation in green and what I have simply done here is I have introduced a new coefficient e1. Now you can of course immediately see that this r plus 1 by pi e a r is equal to 1 by pi e1 a r so that's the equation I have written here and from this equation I can easily obtain a relationship between e1 and e and so the remaining things here are pi which you know aspect ratio which you know and the value of e which you also know so instead of writing this complex equation all the time or dealing with e e1 and so on we simply redefine e1 as e and we write the cd equation like this so the drag polar of the aircraft i have put it in this purple equation here and you can see this is cd is cd0 plus cl square by pi e a r where you have to understand that now this E is slightly different from the E which we started with. This new E is known as the Oswald efficiency factor, which we can also call E1, but since we now know E1 is nothing but a simple function of E, we can simply write this as E. And so the advantage is now I have again obtained the drag polar in a nice form where I have a constant part here and I have a lift dependent part here. So this form is something we were aiming for. Now just to think about why there is a difference between the E and the E1, we have to consider this particular equation which we created for the parasite drag coefficient of the aircraft and the fact that there is a term here which actually dependent on the lift itself. So this term which is dependent on CL is the source of this difference. And of course, if R was equal to zero, you can see from this equation that if I put R is zero, then E will simply become equal to E1. So the difference between E and E1 happens because of the fact that the parasite drag coefficient is actually a function of the lift itself and of alpha. So we are going to not talk about e1 anymore we are simply going to absorb that e1 into e and so we are going to now talk about the oswald efficiency factor e so this is our aircraft drag polar cd is cd0 plus cl square by pi e a r where e is the oswald efficiency factor and this also considers the non elliptic nature of the lift distribution which is present in general wings so general wings have shapes which can be of any type they can be rectangle trapezoid and so on and so you are going to get distributions which are not necessarily of the elliptical type and so e will account for that so we have dealt so much with the equations now let us try to plot it so let's take this aircraft drag polar and let's draw the diagram between cd and cl so you can clearly see here i can plot cd with respect to cl so when CL equals to zero, this is simply going to be CD equal to CD zero. That's this value here. So at this point, CL is zero. So I get CD zero here. That is this point. And of course, as CL changes, if I am in the positive side of the curve, positive CL, this will go up because I have a CL square term. And even if I'm on the negative side of this curve, so I have negative CL here, this is still going to go up because cl square is going to be positive even if cl is a negative value now of course remember that e is the factor which is coming in the oswald efficiency factor maybe something like 0.8 or 0.85 and of course you have the aspect ratio of the wing here which is accounting for the fact that you have finite wing and again all the factors about aspect ratio are important here 
If you have a long slender wing, the behavior is going to be different. If you have short stubby wings, the behavior is going to be different. So aspect ratio is of course going to play an important role in the aircraft drag polar. Now, why would you get negative CL? Now it can happen in certain situations that you will get negative CL if the alpha of the airplane is less than alpha at which lift is equal to zero. And it of course depends on the kind of plane you are dealing with, how the pilot flies it and so on. This is much less likely to take place in typical civilian aircraft, for example, or passenger jets. But if you are dealing with aircraft such as fighters or which are doing much more complex flight patterns, then you may get situations where you have negative CL here also. And in those cases, you may actually need this complete curve here. Now, the reality is that negative CL is rare in many practical situations. So there are many situations where only the positive CL is shown in the graph. So you will see some drag polars where CD by CL will be given and only the positive part of the CL will be given. So here I have zero, here I have these positive values of CL. And so the curve goes like this. It's a simple parabolic curve. And of course, at CL is zero, I have this much drag coefficient present that is CD zero. Now, sometimes there are people who like to plot this curve in a different manner. There are always this type of people in the world. And so here you can see that some people plot CL versus CD. So what happens is that the drag polar will come out like this. Now, what most companies do or aerodynamics people do is that they will spend a lot of time and come up with a drag polar for the particular aircraft. So they are going to find the value of CD zero. They are going to find various CL values and get CD. And then they are going to plot a curve like this. Sometimes they may only plot it in the positive region if that's something they want to know or the aircraft is something which only deals with that region. Now, this is a very useful curve to have because this is going to let you immediately calculate the drag coefficient and therefore you are going to be able to figure out the drag in the aircraft. And always remember the drag is going to be tied to how much trust you need to create and that trust will essentially dictate the propulsion you require for the aircraft. So how much horsepower or how much watts or kilowatts you are going to essentially require there. So that's all going to come out there. Now, the drag polar is given in different places. If you look at any aircraft, if you look at manuals, if you do some research on Google, you are going to come up with drag polar of different aircraft. So I will leave it to you to do that as an exercise and see how the drag polars vary according to the different airplanes. Now, if you are interested, chat GPT may also help you here. So let us summarize the lecture today. We saw that the drag polar of the aircraft relates total drag coefficient to the aircraft parasite drag coefficient and the aircraft lift coefficient that is CD, that is the total drag coefficient to CDE, which is the parasite drag coefficient and the CL squared term, which is the aircraft lift coefficient term. Now, we also saw that because CDE is essentially a function of a constant part and a lift dependent part, we wrote that as CD zero plus R C L square. So we ended up getting this as the actual drag polar of the aircraft, where we finally got the constant term CD zero here. So in terms of the, the Oswald efficiency factor E, we get CD is CD zero plus C L square by pi E A R and do remember that the E we are using here in this curve is different from the E we are using here in this curve and the difference lies because CDE is actually a function of CL. So essentially as far as most aerospace engineers are concerned, this is not something which troubles them too much, but maybe if you are a mathematician, you may be troubled by these kind of things. So I'll end this lecture now and I will see you in a new video. In the next lectures, we will start focusing on the flight mechanics aspect. So we are going to turn our mind to trust and power, which are some of the main issues as far as the aircraft are concerned. And we are also going to look at the basic equations of motion for the aircraft. I'll end this lecture now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.